One of the really nice things for us. Good, because I had a hiccup coming and I was like, uh oh. I would have been so mad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Brandi Nicole. And I'm Emily Teague. And welcome to our home studio in Brooklyn, New York. So we were some of the first people to try out the ELC 125 and the ELC 500, uh, which was really exciting. Our entire studio is Ellen Chrome equipment, and so to try out a new product before anyone else has done it um, is kind of incredible. So Brandi and I have been living together for six months now um, in Brooklyn, New York, um, which is really exciting. And we have kind of a live-work situation. So we have uh, an apartment where, where we sleep, of course, but then um, we've converted the living room into a studio space for us. So it's large enough uh, with tall enough ceilings that pretty much everything we need to do, we can do here. I think beforehand, um, it was just getting way too expensive to even shoot. So for us, like having this kind of built-in home studio is, is really something special. And we are able to shoot any day, any time, and that's just incredible. When I got the concept of getting out of my comfort zone, the first thing my mind went to was set design. Um, I, it's something I've wanted to do for about two years now, and it just hasn't worked out either because of budget constraints, uh, resources, time, money, all of that. And so this was the first time where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do set design. I was like, how how do I how do I get a set? <laughs> like, can I can I go online and just buy one? <laughs> Apparently, you can't. <laughs> or at least I didn't find one. <laughs> Um, so I was like, okay, I'll just build it. Um, on my set, I, I didn't build an entire <laughs> set, but I did build a floor that I was really proud of um, and painted a background, did a baseboard to kind of build um, half of a room. Um, and then for one of my concepts, I had this idea to have this sheet of plexiglass, which I had no idea if it was gonna work out um, or no idea really how to put it up. So um, we we made it work and that, <laughs> I'm so glad it worked out. <laughs> the photos ended up like, yeah, being a dream. I think I pushed myself out of my comfort zone in a couple major ways. Um, first, I was trying to do five different light setups that I had never done before. Um, it was also one of the first times I uh, really planned out my shoe in um, such a way. Like, usually I just go with the flow. I'll find some flowers and just make something work. But this time I was like, okay, like this is the pose I want. This is the makeup I want. Um, so that was really cool too. I think that really enhanced my um, photo shoot overall. It was super fun to watch Brandy shoot um, just because she's done self-portraits in our studio so many times before. Um, and normally when she does, I'm like either working on my computer or I'm just like doing something that I am not distracting her. Um, Cause like it's hard to do self-portraits with other people around. And so I think it was probably really challenging to have like an entire team of people in, in the studio while she was shooting. Um, but for me, it was really fun because I actually got to watch her process and it's super cool um, just to see where you start and what you get inspired by. Um, and I think this was also really, really different because it was so planned out, which was really cool. And so looking at the final photos, like everything is just stunning. Like her lighting is incredibly intricate and beautiful. It's all right. <laughs> Um, yeah, it, it, she did great. Um, her style is very like whimsical, soft, um, very like pastel colors. So I think she took that and just really enhanced everything with the shoot. Emily's style, I think, is usually very dramatic. Um, she likes to incorporate um, a key light and a backlight and maybe a hair light on her sets. And I think this shoot was really interesting for her because I think it was one of the first times that she used four lights maybe, but also she used it to light a set, which I think is really different when you're lighting a set versus you're lighting a model. Um, and I thought that was really cool. She used a lot of lights bouncing um, up to the ceiling to, to cast a nice fill, um, and only maybe one or two lights is a key light hitting the model, so I thought that was really cool. Yeah. We were shooting with the light motive, um, the Rotoluxes, like I think I had a 53 inch Rotolux up yesterday, um, and the light motive is, is pretty massive too, it's 120 centimeters. So. Those are both larger ones, yeah. um, but also like I think we both kind of wanted that really dreamy, beautiful, soft light, which is why we were going with those modifiers. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was I've never shot with the light motive before, and mm -hmm. I really wanted to. So yeah. for this um, campaign, that was my first time doing it, and I was not disappointed. <laughs> it was incredible, um, and I think probably my my new favorite modifiers. I think it was really cool that we were one of the first people to use these lights. Um, I've used the ELB 500s um, for. Uh, 
over a year now and that's always been like my baby. <laughs> and now um, it's really nice to have these new lights. Um, they've, they've been really good on the shoot. I was super pleased with how they functioned when I was shooting yesterday. Um, I was shooting a cat throughout the day and it kept like running around and so I had to shoot really quickly. And even when I was shooting as fast as I possibly could, I wasn't dropping any frames, um, which was a really pleasant surprise. The modeling lights were able to be on all day without um, going dark or having to recharge a battery or anything like that. It's, it really makes sense for our home studio to have um, lights like this. I can just kind of focus on my storytelling elements and not have to worry about anything else. They just kind of fade into the background, which ideally is what I would want from any light. It was cool on my set because it was one of the first times I used different groups. Uh, so I had four different lights and I put them on different groups. And it was easy to look around the set and see which lights were in what group. So I could easily change those settings right in my skyport. I think it's just kind of special that you can create anything and so much in the same space. Well, I think as artists, it's really important to challenge ourselves, um, if not challenge ourselves all the time. And it's definitely been one of my goals to challenge myself for a whole month. And so next month, we are actually going to be taking turns challenging ourselves almost every day um, in the studio using lights in different ways. And I think that's really exciting. And I think it's because of this experience that we are now more motivated to do that too. Yeah, it was kind of a fun reminder from Ellen Chrome of like, you have to constantly challenge yourself. And, and what does that look like? Um, and it's fun to, as we're coming up with next month, like doing this creative challenge for ourselves, just asking ourselves like, are we challenging ourselves daily? Are we growing? What are we doing as artists? Um, so that was nice. I'm sorry. No, but that <laughs> was great. I thought <laughs> it, yeah. it's perfect until you go, that was sick. <laughs>